Alright, we're off today to install a new split system of means. It's a heat pump, Heil N4H3, which is their entry level heat pump with a manufactured home coil because this is going against electric furnace in a uh, double wide. So, uh, just driving up there, Wilmington, North Carolina, and we'll get onto it. Alright, what we have here is a Coleman electric furnace. 11 kW. Lemon KW electric furnace. You can match it up with a variety of outdoor units. What we're going to do here is match it up with a three ton Heil outdoor heat pump. So we have heat pump heat and basically using the strips like a heat pump would use for their supplementary heat strips, just the same way. Uh, old copper lines are coming out, all the drains are coming out, it's all going to be replaced. I'm about to put a new coil in, it's a Heil end coil. So uh, let's get on that. Alright, we have our indoor section. Bolt on line said. Brazed in TXV already brazed in. Tube already mounted. We got our three ton evaporator coil. Well evaporator slash condenser coil since it's a heat pump. There we are, a little end coil. Oh, here's our brand new Heil, three ton heat pump. N4H36, 13 sear, entry level 410A. See there, you can tell. You can see the carrier influence there with the plate. E1145, 2011, 45th week. And look at that. That is a dryer that comes with it. Somebody wised up. So that's perfect. Alright, well, now that you've seen it, I'm going to go ahead and install it. Well, the new Heil looks great up there. You're about to put the line set down underneath the uh, trailer here. It only runs about 10 foot and turns up. Uh, what doesn't look good is the sky. She looks angry. That's not good because I have to do a lot of work outside. Keep your fingers crossed. Okay, we got the brazing all set up. Got the copper lines fitted up. Try to bend a little 45s in there. Got the uh, dryer mounted. And you see the pistons right here for the outdoor unit. What I did was loosen up that. And uh, I'm going to send the nitrogen in through here. It's going to pass inside to the indoor evaporator, push back the TXV run around here and go out there. So we can go ahead and braze up and then I can tighten it up when we're done. That way we have no deposits in the system. We have a nice clean line set. Alright, we got pressure on it. About 215 pounds is held for about 20 minutes or so. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, i got to insulate that line and figure out what that noise is. Some sort of bird. Okay. Yep. I take that off and uh, insulate the line to get the thermostat wire up here. It's time for me to go to a service call in downtown Wilmington. Uh, big old bar getting ready for Friday night. They have a seven and a half ton carrier system that needs servicing. So until Monday. All right, we're back here on Monday morning, a few days later. And my next step will be, I don't know if you can see it, all these double wides have crossover ducts. We had to connect a new 12 inch flex to the crossover duct because the old flex were left outside. So we're going to do that and probably have to do a little digging too to get enough clearance. Fun. Alright, there's our crossover duct. Passes down over there. Had to, of course, dig out from underneath it. Especially where it turns up and goes into the floor. Just to make sure there's enough room. The code requirement is 4 inches. I think I got like 5 or 6 inches under most of it. A little bit of digging. Where else can you be the company owner and dig underneath the ducks? Just like you did on the first day of work. But now we're going to run the drain out. Drain's right there. I'm gonna come right out toward the camera here. Go right out the side of the trailer. Over here. Kind of sit it temporarily until they get the underpinning. And then I'll be going to fish a new thermostat wire because it had 18.2. And we're gonna run 18.8. All right, we got our drain all done, as you can see. There's the P-trap, running straight out the side, temporary fitting there so they can cut the underpinning, piece it together, and then uh, we can slide that back on and glue it, cut it off if we need to. There we are, suspended twice, hard to see, once in the middle, once right here. Alright, on to the thermostat wire. Well, the good news is, uh, I thought it was a two-wire, I don't know why I thought that, come to think of it, it couldn't have been. 
but it's actually either seven or eight wire because they cut off some of the conductors so we can use it. Good news. So we'll go ahead and mount our Focus Pro 3000. It's a, a more economical Honeywell thermostat, but still a really good stat. So I'd like to use this on the, uh, we'll say the low cost jobs. So you still have a good stat, even though you don't want to pay a ton for it. All right, we'll go ahead and mount that, and then we'll move on. All right, we got our thermostat all wired up. Just as a basic run through, going from right to left, we have C is the common terminal for 24 volts. R is the hot terminal for 24 volts. O is our reversing valve. G is our fan. Y is our compressor or contactor, whichever way you want to say it. The AUX terminal is auxiliary heat that will run in concert with your compressor or uh, during a defrost mode. And E is a direct signal for emergency heat, which means your compressor is shot or your reversing valve shot. It's making a horrible noise. You just need heat. Emergency heat is what you want. Okay, we got it all wired up, so I'm going to slap the lid back on there and program it. All right, the first thing we want to do during setup is uh, check our little sheet here. We hit both those buttons and hold them down. All right, we go to number six. Number six says auxiliary heat cycle. So we'll go with electric furnaces with nine. Oops. Dag on it. This is what is a pain. This is different than the other one. Nine cycles power. Maybe not as economical, but more comfort friendly. We'll say that. Alright, number eight. Alright, number eight. This is emergency heat cycle rate. And number nine is for electric emergency heat. So that's what we'll choose again. And it's already up there, so we'll go to the next one. Number nine, compressor cycle rate, and we'll just leave it right there as a recommended rate. But you can make it uh, where the thermostat is less or more sensitive by changing that. Fourteen, we would like Fahrenheit, unlike what I accidentally did, which is Celsius, which I did again, dag on it. So I used to doing the dag on uh, Focus Pro 5000. There we are. Now number fifteen, compressor protection. We'll leave it at five minutes which is just fine. And we'll do a test. We don't need to do the test right now. Because the system doesn't have high voltage yet. Alright, and that's how we set up the Focus Pro 3000. Uh, a little bit more long winded than usual because I went around the cycles a few times. Alright, we added on our safety switch to the drain in case that P trap down there gets blocked up and it backs up. The safety switch will trip off before we have a flood here because all the electrical components are below the coil and we don't want any flooding. Here we have a little wiring splice there. Beautiful. Everything's wired up low voltage wise. And we're about done. I'm going to head outside and do the low voltage out there. And then we're going to punch a new return grill in because we're going to close off this uh, furnace with a wooden door and get the return air through the uh, wall here. All right, we got our dryer vent in right there, which is easy since it just goes right there. Pretty easy. Dryer plug. I installed a new 30 by 20 filter grill. We're going to box this off. Right now it's sitting open, but we're going to box it off, create a door, and make that area behind there into a plenum so we can pull air right there because there's so many cracks around these furnaces. Even though we're using that back area as a plenum, I think it's still tighter than using the furnace itself. So uh, that's about it. Everything's all done here. Unit sitting back here, good looking unit. And uh, that's it for today. I think I'm gonna take the rest of the day off.